Hey guys, welcome to another A-Level Maths Revision video. Today we're taking a look at some Year 2 material and we're looking at the Chapter 10, looking at numerical methods, um, and in this video, Newton Raphs and Method. So, only three questions. Quite a nice topic. Um, if you get this on your exam, think of it as easy marks. As long as you're confident with differentiation, honestly, it's, it's free marks. So, let's take a look at this very first question here. Um, I can't even find my pen. Right, let's have a look at this. So, question two here. Um, we've been given f of x, which is x squared minus 4 over x plus 6x minus 10. So, the first part just asks us to use differentiation to find f prime of x. So, this shouldn't be anything too bad. Um, so, just differentiate it term by term. So, differential um, of x squared, that gives you 2x. So, let's just write that in full f prime of x. So, that's 2x. Um, the minus 4 over x, so you could write that as 4x to the minus 1. And take the derivative of this. So the minus will come to the front, um, but because it's minus 4 over x, so it should, sorry, it should be minus 4x to the minus 1. Uh, the minus 1 will come to the front, so become positive, and this will become minus 2. So subtracting 1 off the minus 1. So that will be minus 4x to the minus 2. Um, oh, sorry, positive 4x to the minus 2. I'm just going to write it as 4 over x squared. Okay, the 6x, well, the derivative of 6x is just 6, and then this minus 10 will just become 0. Okay, so that's just our f prime of x there for two marks, so really easy to get us started. And then part b, this is where we apply the Newton Raphson method. So we're doing it basically for one iteration here to obtain the second approximation of alpha. So the idea here is um, you're essentially looking to find a root, so a solution to this equation, f of x equals 0 in this given interval, so between minus 0 0.4 to minus 0 0.3. So we're told we're going to take x equals um, minus 0 0.4, so the first iteration, or sorry, the first term in this iteration, we're going to take as minus 0 0.4. So we need to apply the formula here. So the formula, remember, is just xn plus 1, so this is how you get the next term. It's going to be equal to xn, so the previous term, minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. So all we've got to do is apply that for our one, our question here. So we want x1, so that would be n equals 0 here. So what we're going to do is just going to use x0 as our previous term. So x0 minus 0 0.4 minus, so f xn, <coughs> so what we're looking for here is f of minus 0.4. So what we'll do is we'll just round down here at the left. So f of minus 0.4. So all you need to do here is sub f um, f of minus 0.4 into this f of x here. So just put minus 0.4 in here. So minus 0.4 squared, minus 4 over minus 0.4, so on and so on. So if you do this correctly, what you should get here is minus 2.24 for f of minus 0.4. And we also need to do this with f prime here, because it's f prime of xm, and xn for our, for our question is this x0 here. So f prime of minus 0.4, what would that give us? Well, all we're going to do is sub minus 0.4 into our f prime here. So two lots of minus 0.4 plus 4 divided by minus 0.4 squared, and then add 6. And if you do that correctly, you should get 30.2. Okay, so essentially we've got everything we need here for this question now. We just need to plug everything in. So it's minus 0 0.4 minus, so I'll just put it in a bracket so we can see it nice and clearly. So it's um, minus 2.24 divided by f prime of xn, which is this here, so 30.2. So because this is minus of a minus here, um, obviously just be careful that like you will be adding it on. Put this on your calculator and then do minus 0 0.4 minus the result of this. And what you should get here to three decimal places is minus 0.326. Okay. Um, a bit of kind of logical thinking here. This this solution should be reasonably close um, and it should be within this interval. Obviously, if you get something like, um, I don't know, 0 0.1 for example wrong instantly because it's not in this interval okay so solution must lie 
between. Um, minus 0.4 and minus 0.3. Sometimes you will be asked to verify that. So that's another part of this topic that you can be asked to show. Um, but just as a bit of kind of logical thinking, if the answer lies without that, you know, outside that interval there, something's gone wrong. But that's our answer there to three decimal places. Moving on to the second question here. Um, again, very similar. The main idea with this one is in part A, we're going to show that the root um, does lie within this interval. Part B, again, very similar, finding the derivative. And then part C, um, just applying the procedure to get the approximation. So I think for part A, just to kind of, you know, send this point home about um, the root line in the interval, a sketch might kind of work best. So the idea I'm trying to illustrate here is if this is my f of x here, like this. I've got this point here, that would be a, and this would be b. Okay, so my interval is a, b. So for example, this point here at a would be negative, we're below the x-axis, and this point b here would be positive, okay, because we're above the x-axis. So the idea here is, if you've got your f of x, this is my f of x here, we know a root must lie within this interval a, b, because between a and b we have a sign change. So for example here, that would be where my root occurs, that would be my alpha. Okay, so that's what we need to kind of demonstrate here now. So what we're going to do is take our interval, so 3.4, 3.5, substitute them into f of x, and what we should obtain is one of them is negative, one's positive. If you don't get that, then you need to double check it, um, put your numbers back in, you should get one positive, one's negative. So if we do that, so part a here, consider both points, So consider both points. So that'd be f of 3.4. That's equal now to lum of 3 times 3.4 minus 4 minus 3.4 squared and then plus 10. Plug this into your calculator and what do we get? So we, we get 0.265, uh, sorry, 4.5 blah 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 okay so that one's positive so what we're hoping for now is that when we do f 3.5 here this one comes out negative if it doesn't then we're, we're in trouble so ln of 3 times 3.5 minus 4 minus 3.5 squared plus the 10 put this on your calculator what you should get here is minus 0.3 7, 8, so on and so on. Okay? So, this is exactly what we needed to show. One's negative, one's positive. So, we just need to kind of summarize this here. Let's we, show that question. So, let's just try and summarize this for the um, examiner. So, that is a change. So, there is a change of sign in the interval that we've given. So in this question, it's 3.4, 3.5. So therefore, what we can say, a root, or the root alpha, lies in this interval. Okay, so that's part A done there. So you don't need to draw a graph or anything like that, um, but you know, just to kind of help illustrate the problem at hand. So part B, again, another quite nice, easy one. Just finding the derivative. So finding f prime of x. So if f of x is this here, we just need to differentiate it term by term again. So the differential of ln 3x minus 4. Well, what would be the derivative of the bracket? So 3x minus 4, that would just be 3. So our derivative is 3 over the bracket 3x minus 4. Okay, because obviously the differential is this here, the 3. So that works. Differential of x squared, that's minus 2x. And then differentiate 10, we're going to get a 0, right? So everything so far there, that gives us f prime of x. 
Okay, so that's f prime of x. And then finally for part c here, we just need to apply the newton raphson method. So we've got f prime of x, which we're going to need for the formula. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to work out f of um, 3.4, f prime of 3.4. And then we've essentially we've done the question. Now don't forget we've already done f of 3.4 with that in part a. So that gave us um, 0.2645. So that was f of 3.4. f prime of 3.4, we need to work this out as well. So that's going to be 3 divided by 3 times 3.4 minus 4 and then minus 2 lots of this. So if you plug this into your calculator, what you should get is minus 6.3161. Okay, so essentially we've got everything we need now for this question. We just need to apply the method. And don't forget our first approximation here, x0, is 3.4. So plugging all that in now, we want x1, the next term, which is going to be the previous term, 3.4, minus f of the previous term, divided by f prime of the previous term. It's going to look something like this. So just to illustrate the method, if you work this out, this is going to be 3.4 minus um, 0.2645 divided by minus 6.3161. That's a 6, believe it or not. Um, and if you work this out, what you get here is 3.4. Or two, so three decimal places. So three decimal places. Okay. So that's that question done there. Like you see, the methods uh, for these questions, nothing too crazy. Just be confident with your differentiation, and you're gonna have a good time with these questions. And then with this very final question here, quite a long one. It's one of these questions where we're kind of using modelling to basically do the question. So. Um, let's just take it step by step because there is a lot going on. So we're given this initial function, ht, which is basically modeling the height of this ball. Um, so it's in terms of sine and cos. So part a, we're asked to show that the t coordinate of a is the solution to t equals square root of 18 plus 80 sine t over 10 minus 18 cos t over 10. So let's have a go at this. Well. If we want to show that the t quant of a is the solution to t equals this, the first thing we need to know is that we're saying basically h of t equals zero, right? That's what we're saying. So what we can do now is essentially write this equation in terms of zero and rearrange for t. So my first line of working would be 0.5 t squared. So taking that onto the other side, and that's going to be equal to everything that we've still got. 40 sine t over 10 minus uh, 9 cos t over 10 plus 9. Okay. So this is technically t squared over 2. So if I times through by 2 now, we get rid of this half here. So t squared, that would be 80 sine t over 10 minus 18 cos t over 10 and then finally just times this by 2 as well we get plus 18 okay now this is starting to look pretty similar to what they've got um, like see we only need to do one more step here just to get t and that would be just square root both sides here so we want it in terms of t so we square root both sides we just get the square root of this minus 18 cos finally plus the 18. So they've done it kind of backwards to how I've done it here but it doesn't matter we've shown basically the same thing so that's as required. Part B here so we're told t0 is equal to 8 we want to find the values of t1, t2, t3 and t4 using um, this iterative formula. So for these questions we're using an iterative formula I can't say that word quite difficult um, you need to use graphical calculator. You can do it by hand, but I just would not recommend it because it's, it's a massive time sink. Um, so if you use your calculator, 
the way to do it, so is what you do is you put the first digit in, um, or your first initial value, which is A. So put A into your screen, um, and then press equals. So you just press in A, and then equals. And then what you need to do, so what this has done is it stored A in the memory, essentially. So what you can do then is write this as the square root of A sine answer. So where there's a T, that's what we're replacing with A. So we write that as answer. So that's what your calculator stores it as the answer. So answer divided by 10 minus 18 cos of you guessed it answer again over 10 plus 18 if we certainly take the square root of the full thing like so so i know it's a bit messy but hopefully you can still follow along and then once you press enter what that's give you is t1 so if you do this correctly what you should get is t1 equals 7.928 to three decimal places don't forget press enter again Make sure you haven't pressed anything else on the screen. Just press enter again. That'll give you your T2 then. So T2, 7.896. T3, press enter again. You get 7.882. And then finally press enter one more time. You get T4, which is 7.876. Okay. And that's it. So that's all you actually have to do for part B there. Um, obviously, just make sure you round them all the same here. But that's it, so no more work other than that. You can do it by hand, but I definitely don't recommend it. Part C here, we're just finding the derivative of h to t. So, just making sure you're confident with differentiating your trig functions. So we'll see here. So h to t is this top function here. So if we differentiate this, so remember we need to take the differential of the bracket, so the t over 10, which is essentially 1 over 10t. Well, what would that be? Well, that'll just give us 1 over 10. So you take that to the front, so it's 40 times 1 over 10, or essentially 40 divided by 10. So what that gives us then, for h, h prime of t, is 4, and then obviously the differential sign um, would be cos. So we get 4 cos t, uh, sorry, yeah, t over 10. What meant about t over 10? Okay, 4 cos t over 10. Do the same now with the minus 9 cos. So again, the 1 over the one over 10 will come to the front. So it would be minus 9 over 10. Um, but just be careful, if you differentiate cos, we'd get minus sign, so minus minus sign. It'll become positive, so it's plus 9 over 10. So 9 over 10 sine t over 10 as well. And then finally, the minus 0 0.5 t squared, if you differentiate that, you'll just get minus t there. Okay? The plus 9 will just become 0. So that's our h prime of t. Part d then. So now we're applying the newton raphson method um, to obtain a second approximation for the time when the height of the ball is 0. So we're told a is our first approximation, so x0 is equal to a. So all we need to do now is work out h of a and then h prime of a. So if we do that, so h of a, that's basically using the first function that we we, would, we denoted. So that's 40 sine, where t is 8. So 40 sine 8 over 10 minus 9 cos 8 over 10 minus 32, because obviously minus a half of t squared, so 64 divided by 2. I'll give you minus 32 plus 9. Put this on your calculator, write in what you get, and you get minus 0.5761. Now we need to work out h prime of 8. What would that give us? Well, that's going to be 4 cos, so using this here, just substitute t equals 8 in. So 4 cos 8 over 10 plus 9 over 10 sine 8 over 10. And then finally, minus t, where t is 8, so minus 8. Again, just evaluate this on your calculator. And what you get is minus 4.5676. So we've got h of 8, we've got h prime of 8. So now, all we need to do is use the formula for the newton raphson So our next term, x1, is equal to the previous term, 8, minus h of the previous term. So let me try it in full. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so that's going to be 8 minus 
um, minus 0 0.5761 divided by h prime of 8, which is this here. I can't write. There we go. So now just plug all this into your calculator. And what you should get here is 7.874. So that's the three decimal places as required. Okay, so to three decimal places. Um, so that, that's the end of part D there. And then finally part E here, which asks to suggest an improvement to the range of validity of the model. So essentially, can you make a common sense comment about the model? So take a look at your kind of graph here. This might give you a bit of, a bit of an idea. Um, one sensible suggestion would just be to simply simply restrict so simply restrict the range of validity to basically T is between 0 and then my upper bound here A where it needs to flow um, so yeah, so there we go. So that's the end of that question there, and it brings us to the end of this video. I hope it's helped. Um, quite a brief one, um, but as long as you're confident with differentiation, you should be okay. If you notice any errors, please just let me know down below.